safe about 1000 plus. It should work out cheaper for me. 4000. You want 5, even more. It's for 200 plus. 400 bucks of savings. One thing I like most about BMWs is that after you stop your car, the music continues to play until you lock your car and walk away. So you don't have that feeling of your music being cut off abruptly when you switch off the engine. You see, can you hear the sound? These are all the metal cooling down after a hard drive. Yep, regular drivers will know that it's hot underneath and as they begin to cool down, you hear this sound going around the car. It's perfectly normal. So uh, initially I wanted to do a, a 10 year review of this car after the drive but today's sun was pretty blaring and I uh, decided to cut off the drive and head back home and here we are. So this is my beautiful BMW 640i Cabriolet. This is the F12 generation 6 series and it is the second generation 6 series after BMW resurrected the 6 series. All right, the 6 series was created in the uh was it 80s? Yeah. And then um and then they stopped making it and then they have the 8 series and then they stopped making that as well and then in 2000 in the Chris Bangle era 2004 they recreated the 6 series which was wildly successful despite this controversial styling and then because of that in 2011 they created this one the F series generation 6 series and this one was so successful that it obliterated the competition it destroyed the Mercedes SL until to the fact that the SL is now a car that Mercedes is struggling to continue because this car obliterated that and it commanded um, I think 60 or 70 percent of the market share of large Grand Touring convertibles, right? It uh, it destroyed the Maserati Grand Turismo, it destroyed the Mercedes SL, and there's no challenger for this segment, right? Why? Because it is such a complete package. It is so comfortable day to day, and um, it seats four adults comfortably. Now, you may see that, oh, there's very little leg room, but that's also because in this car, I love sitting in the Grand Touring driving position. You can see that my seat is set extremely low and that my feet goes up, my legs go up like that and stretch out. And I have a lot of headroom left, right? If it were a, the sitting position of a 5 Series, all right, the seats will be a lot higher and you get a lot more leg room at the back. And you can see my roof is up, but the windows both down. All right, this to me, the ability to drop the rear windows is a true hallmark of what makes a luxury Grand Tourer to be able to have this view. Right, uninterrupted, no pillars here, is what makes uh, a proper Grand Touring Coupe. And Mercedes has been doing it right with the CL um, or S-Class Coupe or even the E-Class Coupe all the way back to the W124 300CE. Right, you're able to drop the rear quarter windows. That to me opens up the entire cabin, gives a completely different vantage point. And that, to me, is what um, splits apart or is what differentiates a proper Grand Touring Coupe. 
as opposed to a normal coupe. All right, and of course, uh, in this generation six series, you know, even in the previous generation, the E sixty three. BMW have this design for the rear uh, soft top, right? Where you have something that looks like a spider, and then look at that. Many people didn't know about this. This rear windscreen can go up and down just like any window, right? And it, it, it first of all, it gives a very unique design look. All right, first thing. Second thing is it keeps the rear windscreen clean I never need to clean it as in if it is a sloping roof you get water stain and all that you get leaves and all that and then you need a wiper but adding a wiper is not pretty and all that and this thing is just beautiful and it doesn't obstruct any it doesn't cut off any view any visibility drawbacks all right and added to the benefit is that when I open the roof raising this window up or down becomes a wind deflector the moment I put it up, it creates a different wind flowing profile that reduces air coming into the cabin. All right, such a brilliant design, but BMW took it away in the 8 series. As we all know, this is the last 6 series, which is a major wrong decision from BMW. They want to pave way to, to, to have the 8 series. and. When I look at the 8 series, I don't see it as being one segment up from this because the 8 series is smaller than this 6 series. First of all, it's smaller. It doesn't have more room. It has the same interior as a 3 series, more or less so. Whereas this one has a unique interior which is different from the 7 or the 5. And then the 8 series in the coupe, you couldn't drop the rear quarter window. So if you couldn't drop the rear quarter window, you are just a coupe, a large coupe, instead of a grand touring coupe. You are in no way competing against an S-class coupe, for that matter. All right. Now, uh, how has the ownership experience been like for 10 years? Oh, so this car is 10 years old, but I've owned it for 7 years. It's been amazing. This car has been so reliable, uh, requires very little maintenance has enough power unlike this one which has too much power and uh, it consumes very little fuel considered its performance you know uh, I get I get 500 kilometers out of my full tank regularly you know it's so easy to squeeze 500 km out of it it's fuel efficient it's it's extremely comfortable it's very well built okay uh, BMWs of this generation the interior is not as well built as Audis of this generation but nevertheless it's been built with um, beautiful materials all around all right and it has a beautiful cabin look at that it's just wonderfully finished all right it's so comfortable and the best thing that I like about this car is the seating position and foot pedal placement I put a lot of emphasis when I do my reviews on pedal placements because it affects your back right whether you get a back ache or your feet gets too tired it has everything to do with how you place your legs when you're driving and BMWs and Porsches always have the, the perfect positioning all right of sitting position Audis as well but I'll come to that later never mind I don't have the keys to, to my RS6 now I'll explain all right both the Audi and that Audi over there the RS6 and this one has perfect seating position but what differs them is that from BMW the height of this footrest all right the height of this footrest is more or less the same as the pedal all right and of course this is an organ type pedal where it's floor mounted which is better uh, than the dangling type in my opinion um, and the height of them, the reach, all right, is more or less the same. Of course, this one is maybe a, an inch or somewhat deeper. And this one, the height of this and the and the brake pedal is also like an inch apart, right? This is taller. Whereas in the Audi, the footrest is perfectly placed, but the brake pedals and the the throttle pedal is somewhat here, right? It's almost half a feet, half a feet closer to me than 
the left foot rest, which is you get you, you get both feet like that. You know, uh, isn't uncomfortable, but when it comes to long distance driving, where you want a a, a more relaxed uh, feet position as opposed to your pedal, you need to move your seat a lot further and that results in the left leg not being able to put on the footrest. Nevertheless, there's a lot of room. There's more leg room in the footwell of the Audi. Of course, we all know that this generation Mercedes-Benz, the current E-Class, C-Class generation, doesn't even have a footrest. Right? All it has is just a lump of carpet there and very little room here, which is wrong in my opinion. Uh, where is my Aston Martin over there? To repeat, it has a perfect foot pedal placement position. However, the footrest, the footrest of that Aston Martin is too short for my feet. I have size 11 and a half feet and it's slightly too short, which result in me having to place my, my feet. See, this one, I can put it like that. Extremely comfortable. Right, that's my size 11 and a half feet. But in the Aston, I have to do, do that because it's not long enough. And for my right leg, look at that, both my legs is very comfortable. Whereas in the Audi, my legs will be here. You know? Yeah, that's the difference. And uh, for those of you not familiar with this car, look at the dials. They're fully dark when they're not started. Extremely beautiful. And uh, BMW was one of the first to have really well integrated graphics with analog, digital graphics and analog. The integration was done really, really well. The ergonomics of this car is just fantastic, right? The aircon vents, the uh, BMW pioneered this placement of infotainment screens, and then the entire industry followed, and then Mercedes just did a single screen, you know where everything connects anyway um, this is a 2011 car all right I've owned it for seven years now and um, fantastic I mean CD player these buttons they look plastic but they are actually touch sensitive buttons as you run your fingers across they sense you touching and then a menu appears on top which means that I can customize these buttons to what I want you know and then as I run across, it will show the preview of what I'm selecting before I press it. Fantastic. And as for the aircon controls, this is also much better than the one in the RS6. The one in the RS6, I need to press a logo of a fan and then I use the knobs to adjust the fan. Whereas this one, there are, there's, it's, it's like a toggle button, left and right toggle on the same button. Smaller fan, bigger fan, you know. And this generation BMW, the markings, the legends on these buttons, they come off, you know. Um, look at this one. This one has come off, you know, some of them. So these kind of issues are non-existent in Audis. Audis have done these things really, really well. All right. Um, there is a facelift version with a black color gear knob and a more sexier design, but I love this electronic gear knob from BMW again they pioneered the industry now everybody follows them this thing also was pioneered by BMW which is an, an, a knob that controls the iDrive and then Audi made it better by adding shortcut keys you know and then BMW also added their shortcut keys this is an excellent execution I prefer this whole design this whole modular you see this is one module this is one module you know and they're separated and they can be moved around across different cars whereas BMW now they made one giant singular module to have everything and you see the same thing in the 8 series 5 series 3 series everything it's just and it's it's just too ridiculous in cost cutting in my opinion you know separating separating them allows a little bit more interior design freedom all right and um the uh, convertible controls are here, and then this one. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the sound of a cable rubbing against. And this car, despite being a coupe, right, it has loads of room. The uh, the center armrest storage is very big. Split opening, which is more practical than Mercedes Benz's 
complicated, you know, dual hinge, all right? And over here, the glove box is big as well. It's covered in felt, very comfortable material. I place my smart tag in there, which is hardwired to my car and a sensor over here. So I don't need to raise my smart tag when I cross uh, smart tag lanes. Um, one thing I, I, I kind of felt they could have done better. Look at this, this handle over here on the passenger side. I kind of wish they have that on the right side as well. You know, for some reason the driver don't get it. But I would love that for me to slot my palms through. Now this car has real wood inlays and uh, these are beautiful lacquered wood. And of course, sometimes I joke to my friends, I say that, oh, this is actually forged carbon. It could be like that. But uh, I'm happy with this trimming. You know, I love this interior combination. I love cream or white leather. And of course, panels as well. I, I just love this combination. All right. Uh, certain parts of the car, material-wise, is not, it's not that decent. Like, especially the visors, they feel cheap. They just feel cheap. This little piece of uh, fake leather material just just doesn't. It's not up up to par, I would say, in terms of material. Uh, steering wheel. This steering wheel isn't sexy to look at. All right. This is this looks really old and dull, but the buttons are really well built. It's comfortable to touch on, and um, and it's it's way better built than the sexier 3 spot M Sport steering wheel. I think the other day one of my viewers was like, hey Bobby, you should change your steering wheel to the 3 spot M Sport, which I agree, the 3 spot M Sport looks beautiful, but then it isn't as well built as this steering wheel. This steering wheel just feels sturdy, feels quality. All right, and uh, I, I see car makers cutting costs on their steering wheels now, uh, Porsche as well, the 992. That has a really cheap steering wheel, but then you know for a fact that they want you to upgrade your steering wheel with uh, better trimming and all that. So intentionally making drivers to upgrade their cars with specs and options now, right? Uh, there's a little bit of a aluminium insert here, very subtly done, nice. Uh, there's another trimming that I quite like, which is uh, like a like a stamp aluminium panel on this this panel this part and then this part but that will reflect sunlight so there's a little bit of a practicality concern over there uh, carbon fiber I think is nice but doesn't suit this car as much as some beautiful they could uh, wood all right uh, another thing that I'm not happy with is the size of the door pockets as opposed to the size of the door because the door pockets could have been a bit larger because the speaker housing is over here it could have been larger to be able to put some water bottles or something like that all right but of course i i reckon they they care about design more than practicality in this car all right so yeah uh, the door handles solid aluminium door handles yep they're made of solid aluminium not some lousy cheap you know uh plastic chrome and all that i i would have been happy if this car come with the uh, bang and olufsen uh, this time around, BMW is still working with Bang & Olufsen, where there's one with uh, the metal inserts, you know, beautiful. And then there is a Bang & Olufsen tweeter here that rises when you start the car. Uh, of course, uh, anyone who carries genuine BMW parts, you want to sponsor me? A set of Bang & Olufsen speaker. <laughs> okay, joking. And, um, yeah, it's... Um, such a beautiful car. You know, so these are the rear seats. You have some controls over here where you can move the seats front and then uh, an adult actually can sit in. I move it more now just to show you how it feels inside here. See, I get full headroom as an adult and the seating position isn't awkward. I also get an armrest. And, uh, Yep, lovely. But curiously, there's no aircon vents here. Whereas in the four door version, you get you get rear aircon vents, and even in the E ninety two coupe, you get rear aircon vents. I'm just not sure why. I don't get it in the six. Right. So. Uh, Okay, I 
I've switched it off for too long. <laughs> yeah, most cars will cut power to these after you switch off the engine for a long time. Alright, and one more thing I really love, which I'm guilty of is uh, stuffing the boot full of random stuffs because this car has an exceptionally large boot for a two-door convertible look at the entire boot right it's lined in thick carpet and it's huge it's huge and the only space that i need to reserve for the roof is only this much only this height all right and i just pull this down and the roof is operational so I don't need to always push this up because the available room is huge so I can drop my my top anytime I like all right huge boot beautiful car and um, I'm so glad I did not sell it because now that I look at the prices of coupes they're going for like 170, 180,000 the uh, four doors around that range and a convertible which is so rare you, don't, you, you won't be able to find one in the market comparing to the two door coupe which is everywhere this should be worth 250 and I bought it for 250 brand new the car costs 860,000 think about that for a moment 860,000 oh I want to talk about the bumpers this is the standard bumper. I have a set of M Sport bumpers, the original BMW M Sport bumpers that the previous owner uh, sell to me as well together, but I never liked that. So I kept it in the storeroom. So I won't be changing that because the only bumper that looks better than this is the one from the M6. And uh, I think the original one just looks far more classier, beautiful. Um, the facelift headlamps looks prettier, the one with a little cut over here, but I'm happy with these. Right. And the car has served me really, really well. Of course, like I say, in this generation, these plastics, they weren't as um, well fitted as more modern BMWs, but that's a small complaint. All right. And the seat belts, the runners themselves need to be exchanged. I need to replace them because it's been 10 years and uh, of course Darren did a fantastic job in helping me restore the car, take care of the car, look at the interior, right, it's just beautifully finished and and of course over the years they've, they've gone dirty but um, auto detailer at uh, Jaya One, Darren Chang, my good friend, he has done a wonderful job even cleaning the, the dirt within the stitches all right he even extracted the seat belt and cleaned it up and uh, the whole detailing of the car is just wonderful it's, it's basically restoration turns the car back time and look at the paint the beautiful finishing the gloss all right and now comes the question why a lot of people ask me why I want to change the color um, I think this car deserves it. I think it deserves it. It deserves a, a nicer hue because there, there's a lot of beautiful lines on this car that um, you just can't see it from this from this color. Apart from this haunch at the back here, this really powerful line. There is a lot of little design details as there is a little curved line here that is just beautiful but it wasn't shown on this color because this color is pretty flat so i wanted a color that can highlight the the, the brighter areas and darken the shadow areas and show all these beautiful lines as the car is going and i think that that will do justice to this car and i'm not changing some random colors it's a it's a stock bmw color and I think that would, would fit this car really well, especially with the white interior. I wanted a, a more chill kind of land yacht look to it. So it would be a blue that is not too light, but reflects really light really well, you know, so that light follows the contour of the car 
and then a slightly larger wheel with a, a brighter um, polished finish and then the white interior and I think that would complement the car really well not going for a sporty look not going for aggressive look and if there is a way for me to buy a brand new convertible top that is in white color I might do it because I don't know I mean I have loud cars over there I have a absolutely fast car over here that, that just the speed of the RS6 just just doesn't make sense right? it's just ridiculous and this car this car has has been so reliable let me open let me close the window let me show you look at that the rear quarters oh and one more thing one more thing I really want to highlight this this one I, I don't understand why but I'm glad it is I noticed one thing you know a lot of cars when you open all windows or just both front you know and then you close them at the same time they rarely close at the same speed they rarely close together right not the case with this car I noticed one thing this car consistently my windows will close in perfect sync uh, the, the rear quarter windows or the front windows I, this is definitely something that has been specifically engineered by BMW to make sure it does so because a lot of cars don't do that you know you can you can you can be closing them at the same time but they don't but this one does all right so yeah, this is my beautiful, beautiful BMW 640i Cabriolet. I will not sell this car now. I cannot find another replacement, to be honest. I did ponder, I did somewhat ponder about it. But at the end, I just realized that, sorry, I dropped something, but I couldn't tell what was it. I think it's my e-secret. Okay, anyway, let me, let me explain. This is a weird video at a weird place. <laughs> Isn't that so? Oh, another thing I noticed on, on my Aston Martin, the seats are flushed to the side so I never need to pick up anything in my SM Martin because it's flush to the side things just get caught there I don't know why more car why wouldn't more car makers do that anyway let's come to talking about the replacement can I start the car again it's just too warm sorry sorry for that okay let me brighten myself up okay of course obviously I did ponder that thought and of course when I saw the Mercedes S-Class Cabrio I'm like oh my god that's gonna be my next uh, huge four dog you know but after coming to my senses I've driven the car a few times right that S-Class Coupe doesn't handle anywhere near as fluid as this car of course there's a lot of technology in that car you know how when you turn when you turn to the left you know the right suspension would lift the car up and the seat would you know uh, inflate and, and keep you in position and all that nonsense you know but it, it never does it on time it's always slightly later and that car is just outright lanyard you know I wouldn't enjoy that car in, in Uriam even this car is slightly too big for certain roads you know that is even larger but of course the interior is beautiful the way the car looks when it's moving is just glorious all right but um, after having more thoughts no definitely not it's not like it's within my my realms as well no I have had the Aston I mean and a used S-Class Coupe S63 would have been around that price as well five six hundred thousand I cannot afford two five six hundred thousand cars um, 
so I, th that is out and it doesn't it is not athletic it's just, it's just a slow goer you know boulevard cruising the type you know and um, of course I, I did I did have a playful thoughts on a oh e92 m3 cabrio you know a convertible uh, after having driven it in, in, in Chu Yang's car is not much, that much faster than this car anyway of course it sounds a lot better but Rotex is also a lot crazier you know this Rotex is 2000 ringgit that that will be somewhere in the realms of 8000 uh, or 9000 ringgit right oh no no 7000 ringgit yeah 4 litre is 7000 ringgit and um, and of course this car has a much higher grade interior because the starting point is different one is a 3 series which is a 200,000 ringgit car this is a 6 series which is an 800,000 ringgit car so they all have a completely different uh, they have a different starting point as to where they were positioned where they were initially posi positioned um, then I do have thoughts on the um, sorry the Japanese kids of my neighbor um, I, 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 one car that I really really like is the Maserati Grand Cabrio alright I think the car looks beautiful uh, the car also has four seats just like this car and it has a just crazy engine 4.7 v8 you know which is which is glorious the way it sounds but again coming back that requires a lot higher running cost 4.7 liter would be somewhat in the 9000 ringgit realm for for road tax uh, it's a Maserati Ferrari kind of family kind of engine which means they won't be as reliable as this engine and um, but of course they sound wonderful and that, that's a close to exotic levels but that car is also the car that this car slotted why because this is just way more comfortable uh, spacious you know beautiful interior the Maserati's interior is just <laughs> yes leather yes carbon fiber you get all the recipes but the cook or the chef is mm -hmm, they need a German there to actually fit things around for them and um, and I'm sure the Maserati or the Mercedes S-Class Coupe wouldn't be as reliable as this as we all know uh, like Audis big Audis reliable small cheap Audis not reliable that was the, the, the old understanding that everybody has, right? Uh, big engines that Audi does themselves, 4 litre, 5.2, 3 litre supercharged, they're all fine, no issues. Those that were shared with Volkswagen, haha. Whereas Mercedes Benz is the other way around. The big ones are not reliable, all right? They, 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 they just won't end, you know, S Class or S Class Coupe, they have all those crazy technology, and their customers don't mind because they're the first to have it. They are five or ten years ahead of the, the industry, right? And Maserati, uh, I don't think if you drive it daily, I don't think they will have uh, like catastrophic issues because those are pretty analog cars. But the basics, um, the basics of it, you know, electronics, you know, uh, you know whether the car would leak uh, engine oil or you know, it's just it's just the precision to things, you know. Uh, metallurgy, you know, metal and all that, you know, I mean, my, my SM Martin repeat will be 10,000 times more. Sorry guys, uh, <laughs> the battery runs its course, the battery just <laughs> finished, and uh, I just have to come back and uh, get my battery changed. So, yeah, as I was saying, um, I, did, I did try and look around if there are any convertibles that I may be looking at you know I, I did I did look at a Porsche 911 a 997 generation Porsche 911 convertible and uh, which is which there's one for sale but the owner was like baiting because he put up the car for 208,000 and then when people inquire he went up to 210 and then 220 and then 230 and then now he's at 258 which I think is not overpriced. 250000 for a 997 generation, a 911, a regular Carrera is uh, sort of about right because of its rarity. You know, there are so few of them running around. Um, there are just so, so few of them running around. So I think um, 
it's not ridiculous asking price and it has a what 3.4 3.8 liter but the thing is this yes it's a 911 um, no it's not as pretty as a 6 series convertible <laughs> it is just not as beautiful a car as this beautiful long 6 series an, an S class coupe is prettier and uh, Maserati Grand Cabrio is pretty as well but a Porsche 911 yes it has the classic Porsche looks but it's not about the design also um, at the end of the day it's a naturally aspirated 3.8 liter flat 6 engine that sounds average I think BMW 6 cylinders sound better um, they have a nicer sound to it. Of course, the best sounding six cylinder is the Nissan GTR and Alfa Romeo Bussos, right? But of course, again, it's a Porsche. It, you know, it's a Porsche. You know, it's a Porsche thing. And when you look at a Porsche, it's it's, it's a timeless design, right? Because they stick to it. Um, the size of the nine nine seven is wonderful. It is a it is a better size than nine nine one. It is a better size than. Then uh, 992, it has proper foot pedal placement as opposed to some 930 or 964, which I was so excited to see one and then I, sit, I sat in there and then I put my feet down and I was like, no way. I, I won't even think about it anymore because it's not, it's not a sitting position that you can properly enjoy the drive. You know, you have to like contort yourself, put two feet on the side. So it's more about the conscious image that you project that you're stepping out from a classic 911 an air cool 911 you know there is a lot of romanticism associated to to owning that car or driving one uh same like you know r32s you know nissan 240z's 260z's it's about the image of you standing stepping out of the car it's not about you enjoying the drive of the car like an mx5 like an s2000 right so they are very different propositions, you know. And S two thousand, you can you, you know for a fact that the owner enjoys and exists the performance and everything out of the car, you know, just just squeezes it out, you know. Whereas these aircraft, they are more like chill, you know. Yeah, some of them drive a little bit faster and all that, but it ultimately as a driving package, is it's not anywhere near. Uh, uh, it's a different thing. It's a different thing that people are. It's more fashion. It is actually more fashion than function, right? So, uh, after I, I pondered a bit, then I was like, mm, nah, you know, I need my car to be able to, like, my, my kids love that the fact that sometimes I send them to school in this car. Uh, they get to sit at the back. They ask me to drop, drop the, the top. So, from my house, I drop the top all the way until... We cross the toll of the smart tunnel toll, then we close it because convertibles in tunnels are crazy. The the uh, the echo that ricochets around the tunnel just just creates a blaring hum that you 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 might not be able to 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 withstand it. All right, that's the downside of soft top convertibles only in tunnel. All right. Um, but if you drop it, it's, it's, it's fine because you expect it, right? But when when you close it, you try to keep it out, it's going to just come in, you know. Um, yeah, so there aren't any convertibles that are reasonably, uh, has reasonable performance, you know, reasonable maintenance, looks, uh, comfort, storage you know there's just no replacement for this f12 generation uh, bmw 6 series now for those of you out there looking at the 6 series coupe prices have come down to 160 about the price of a mazda 3 and this will be the last year where you can get a loan to buy that i tell you go for it if you need any questions come to me uh, you can ask me about it be it the 6 series grand coupe or the 6 series and of course, if you're lucky, a 6 Series convertible, go for it. These cars are reliable. They are superbly reliable, low maintenance, low fuel consumption, and they're just wonderful to drive, wonderful to own. And the looks of it just won't really get old, even in, in the next 10 years, you know. 
uh, this will this design is more lasting than than the A series. You know, A series looks like a like a like a two door Kia Optima. Um, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, it's 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 not expensive to run. It's uh, it's low fuel consumption. It has enough power. Stage one tune will get you four hundred horsepower. It's, it's such a no brainer. So I would recommend anyone who's looking at a BMW 6 Series Coupe, F06, F12, F13, go for it. Because it's just, it's, it's something that BMW did really, really correctly. Alright, yes, there's some plastics of the, in, in the car might, might, might come off over time, you know. Uh, my my seatbelt runners at the back, you know, the, the plastic cap that was mounted on the seat itself, the plastic cap fell off, one of it broken. And uh, Darren helped me order new ones and put them back in. Those are small issues, but over overall, this car is just wonderful. Despite it's a long car, big, I never once scrape the bottom. Provided it's you, you load a lot of people and then you go through a speed bump too fast, you know. But uh, other than that, it's just it's just overall wonderful. Um, this eight-speed gearbox, um, which BMW says requires no no oil change or maintenance. Don't believe them; they're lying. Uh, you change your gear oil like like me. I change my gear oil every forty thousand. I change my engine oil every five thousand. That's my. That's how I take care of my car. So you know, give them fresh fluids. Why? Oils are cheap. In in the grand scheme of car maintenance, changing your en engine oil is cheap. It's the cheapest thing you can do to keep them in optimum uh, condition. Why don't wouldn't you want to do it? Just do it. You know. And um, yeah, change your fluids often and uh, take care of the car and uh, upgrade your infotainment screen to, to some Android screen. And this car is just, yeah, it's a wonderful car. And uh, I'm going to give it a new paint job in the following week. That means I wouldn't be able to drive this car for one week. All right? Oh, <laughs> Yep, that's my uh, ten year old ten year ten year car seven year ownership experience video. Alright. I I yeah. Love this car to bits. Love it, love it, love it. Fantastic car, this BMW F thirteen or twelve? Twelve. Thirteen is the coupe. Am I right? Something. Cheers guys, and uh, I've reviewed more than a thousand cars, if you want to know more about them, you can follow my channel and look at the description, my entire team, 14 YouTube channels there, everybody does different things, Your different reviews cars different way, driving experience, adventures, you know, all kinds of it, just check them out, cheers. God that the brothers on the rise now. Endless celebrations all in my house. Yeah. Levitating now, I'm super duper fly now. Yeah. Let them boy, but they see where I reside now. Put the time in while you always yell it time out. Yeah. And for it, cause I know I'm coming with it. You were sitting, you were wishing I was handling my business. Yeah. Now I got the ball like Harry Potter playing Quidditch. And my business is so humongous. You were thing that happens in that.